Welcome back, uh, another match of the Spirit Mongo 187. As you can see, I'm still stuck at the 265 rating. Well, the last match was really, was a real cool match. It was an accident, but it was a real nice match after all. It was a quick finish. Turn 5, I won, or something. Yeah, I didn't expect that, but now I'm gonna play Lance the Shadow Stalker again. So, what, we'll see what this match will bring. It was a real strange match. My opponent forgot to sacrifice his card. Yeah, you really have to see that match. It was a real quick game with my gold farming deck. Now we're playing the Assassin again and trying to reach 270 ranking points. I've had that before in the season, but yeah, I've uh, experimented some decks and lost a few matches, so sometimes you lose two rating points and yeah, that sucks. And what we're facing here is an Amber Rain deck. That is the deck I play most of the time and I like the much. I think it's one of the best, yeah, it is the best decks in my opinion of Shadow Era. But I'm just trying to uh, yeah, play some different decks. As our opponent here. Pretty quick with the Christopher Wild taking me down. Um, let's see what we have in our opening hand. Let's just get rid of the Raven Wild type. Yeah. Or yeah. Let's just sacrifice that and turn. So we have nothing with this little creature, but with this ally. But I have to drop it in turn two, in my opinion, because otherwise I will have no drops until turn three, four, five. So I really need a drop because this opening end is not not a good one, especially not for the Amber Rain deck. As you can see here, yeah, it's already taking board control. But my uh, little what's his name, Agent Rex, has spelled, so he can attack him. Can't attack him. Let's just get rid of Tom and Dead because we do not have a lot of allies, and I don't expect to have a lot of allies in the grave soon. We will just play the Agent Rex and then turn. But our opponent here is a pretty fat deck for Amber Rain deck. So we'll probably play some. Uh, Red Sanders in it as well. I'll just save my server dice for his Blood Frenzy. If he's gonna. Oh, this sucks, man. It's a lot of damage. So we have to take out the all in uh, next turn. And just stab him to death. We're taking a lot of damage this turn. Pretty quick. Um, yeah, let's just get rid of this one. And use the assassination on the all in. Next turn, I will be down at 17. Maybe some less if he got a weapon or another Alden. I think he's gonna drop his one of his weapons. The Jeweler's Green, I thought his name was. But it, yeah, he has a large deck, so I don't know what he's gonna drop. But he's going to play a Blood Frenzy. So next turn, we take out the Blood Frenzy and kill the Christopher Wild. And we'll sacrifice the Nightshade. I think, yes. Because I want to keep this one for his weapon, I'm going to use this one against this Blood Frenzy. Oh, yes, target Blood Frenzy, thank you. And we'll just take out the Christopher Wild. So I'm still stuck at 17. It's going to deal me at least 2 damage next turn. I hope he doesn't grab a Jewel of Dream. I don't want to go below 15 health against this deck. But yeah, he's dealing a lot of damage pretty soon, but without the Blood Frenzy. Maybe if you have two in his hand, you already sacrificed one. Oh my god, a Dimensional Reaper, so he's gonna draw a card for my deck. As you can see in my last and latest match, I lost a few matches. I explained why card sleeves are pretty useful. Now you can see he's having a card of me in his hand. And if I didn't choose the sleeve and he draw an external card, I don't know if he sacrificed it or, or, or not. So, what are we gonna do here? I'm gonna, we certainly wanna play the Stop Thief. And then we we'll get an extra mana, so we add 5, and I want to sacrifice something so I can play the champion, I think. Or not. Um. Oh, man. I'm going to sacrifice the champion. Yeah, we're going to sacrifice the champion. I will just take down his weapon. Because it's dealing too much damage. I'm going to attack him. For 1. Next turn we'll take out the pure. So I do not really, I hope he doesn't grab a weapon or something. I really hope that. Because then we're in deep trouble. Allies, no problem. Because we got the, the ankle breaker. But another weapon, that will be bad. Very bad. So as I can see now he dropped he, he grabbed the jasmine from my deck, so yeah we have to take that one out. Probably gonna sacrifice the uh oh, that sand worm or if this one is one of the main cards you always have to keep for the card drawer. But at this point, um, I want to play the Ankle Breaker. Uh, 
Let's so just sacrifice nothing. Or play the Jasmine with haste. Yes, that's the better. Yes, that's much better. Just gonna skip our draw. Play the Jasmine. Use our ability. So we can disable the Puin. We can attack him. The other Jasmine with stealth or ambush and take him down with Agent Rex. So now all of the problems are solved. Unless he's grabbing a weapon, but he's playing a pretty fat deck. So the chances are very big that he draws cards that he can't use at this point. So if you like play four to play four jeweled streams, uh, he almost got 40 cards left in his deck, so the chances are pretty high that he doesn't draw it. Uh, let's play this one. Disable the pion. And we're gonna hit him for three. And another. And I really like some uh, uh, heroes that have healing uh, cards. I only have one, and I sacrificed it in the beginning. It gives me two cards and heals me two damage for four resources. But I have to have some allies in my graveyard. And I want to use that uh, ability. So what are we going to do? I'm going to take down four, three left. Taking down this Puin to draw a card. And we'll attack him with another. And I'm just gonna activate the ability and attack with another Jasmine. He's down at 19. So if he's drawing a weapon, he's probably gonna do me at least 4 damage. So it will take him 3 turns to kill me if he's gonna draw a weapon. Because the Dimensional Blade has 2 attack, it gets plus 2 from his ability. The Jewelist Dream only has 1. But it still is gonna take him 3 turns because I'm at 9 life. Just playing an Alden, no problem. Just drawing away this one. Two, four, then we have four left. So the best thing to do is to play this one. Use one ability. Wait a minute. Uh, yes. Just gonna use the ability. This. We attack. And attack. And attack. And another one, taking down to 10. And we're gonna disable the album. So next turn, he will be dead. If he doesn't top deck. So he was taking me down pretty quick. And if I didn't disable the uh, Blood Frenzy with the Surfer Ties, it was a 100% lose. Nah, 100%. Let's say 60 40. It was a real bad. Uh, I was in real bad shape. So let's just kick in another one. And use our ability. On him, he's gonna attack. This was a pretty good card he just draw. Gives him another turn, I think. Attack. I didn't do the match right. Um, and just another attack. I'm taking him down to seven. Cost another Jasmine. And take down. Just in case, you never know. So you can draw a card from it. I'm not gonna calculate anything, I'm just gonna hit him, hit him, hit him, and taking down his ally, so. This was a pretty, uh, really turned the table with the server ties. So it's a really nice card to have in your deck. And if you're playing against an opponent like a, a mage who doesn't use any of those abilities that you can remove with the server ties, just sacrifice it. Then you don't have to think about cards to sacrifice, you just sacrifice the server ties. But in matches like this, it really turned the table and giving me a win. So that's it, guys. I hope you liked it, enjoyed it. Uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next match.